In our previous video, we talked about secondary memory, which is permanent storage, and this dealt with hard drives. Now we will talk about primary memory, or temporary storage, and this is called RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory. In order for a data or program to run, it needs to be loaded into RAM first. So here is how it works. The data or program is stored on the hard drive, and then from the hard drive it is loaded into RAM. Once it's loaded into RAM, the CPU can now access the data or run the program. A lot of times, if the memory is too low, it might not be able to hold all the data that the CPU needs. And when this happens, some of the data has to be kept on the hard drive to compensate for low memory. So instead of data going from RAM to the CPU, it has to do extra work by going back to the hard drive, and when this happens, it slows down the computer. To solve this problem, all you need to do is increase the amount of RAM on the computer. And by increasing the memory, all the data can be loaded into RAM without the need to constantly access the hard drive. The result is a faster performing computer. RAM requires constant electrical power to store data, and if the power is turned off, then the data is erased. RAM is stored on the motherboard in modules that are called DIMMs, and these DIMMs come in different memory sizes. Today, they range anywhere from 128 megabytes up to 64 gigabytes of memory per DIMM. RAM also comes in different types, such as dynamic RAM or DRAM. DRAM is memory that contains capacitors, and because it has capacitors, it has to be refreshed often. SRAM stands for static RAM. This memory uses transistors and does not have to be refreshed, unlike DRAM. Because of this, it is much faster than DRAM and it is also very expensive. An example of SRAM would be the memory cache levels 1 and 2 that are used by the CPU. Another type of memory is called SDRAM, and it stands for Synchronous DRAM. This type of memory is what is used today in RAM DIMMs. The difference between SDRAM and DRAM is speed. The older DRAM technology operates asynchronously with the system clock, which means that it runs slower than the system clock because its signals are not coordinated with it. But SDRAM runs in sync with the system clock, which is why it is faster than DRAM. All the signals are tied to the system clock for a better controlled timing. SDRAM is rated at different speeds. For example, a stick of SDRAM could be labeled PC100. The 100 equals the speed at which it operates, which is 100 MHz. And since SDRAM only comes in 64-bit modules, it has an 8-byte wide bus because 64 divided by 8 equals 8. So, to figure out the total bandwidth of PC100, you multiply 100 MHz times 8 bytes, which equals 800 megabytes per second. So the total bandwidth of PC100 equals 800 megabytes per second. For an SDRAM module labeled PC133, you multiply 133 times 8 bytes, which equals 1066, and the total bandwidth for PC133 equals 1066 megabytes per second. As technology increased and processor and bus speeds got faster, a new RAM technology was developed to keep up with the faster speeds of computers. This newer technology was called DDR, which stands for Double Data Rate. And that's basically what DDR does. It sends double the amount of data in each clock signal when compared to non-DDR RAM. Non-DDR or Single Data Rate RAM uses only the rising edge of the signal to transfer data. 
but DDR uses both the rising and falling edges of the clock signal to send data, and this makes DDR twice as fast. DDR is also labeled differently from non-DDR RAM. Instead of including a clock speed in its name, like PC133, where 133 equals the clock speed, DDR uses the total bandwidth instead. For instance, a DDR DIMM labeled PC2700, the 2700 is not the clock speed, but it is the actual total bandwidth. The clock speed for PC2700 is 333 MHz, so 333 MHz times 8 bytes is rounded off to 2700 MB per second, which is where we get the name PC2700. Another example is PC3200. PC3200 has a clock speed of 400 MHz. So 400 times 8 equals 3200, which is where we get the name PC3200. A new technology that has succeeded DDR is DDR2. DDR2 is faster than DDR because it allows for higher bus speeds, and it also uses less power than DDR. A DDR2 DIMM has 240 pins compared to 184 pins on DDR. Some examples of DDR2 are PC2-3200 and PC2-4200. And the latest RAM technology is called a DDR3. DDR3 is twice as fast as DDR2 with a bandwidth of over 12,800 megabytes per second. Like DDR2, a DDR3 DIMM also has 240 pins, but the notches in the DIMMs are in different places, so you can't put a DDR3 DIMM in a RAM slot made for DDR2. Motherboards are made to support a certain type of memory, so you can't mix DDR1, 2, or 3 on the same motherboard. Some examples of DDR3 are PC3-8500, and PC3-12800. There is another type of memory called RDRAM, which was developed by Rambus Inc. They developed the RIM, which stands for Rambus Inline Memory Module. RIMs have 184 pins and look similar to DIMMs, with the exception that the bottom notches are located in the center of the module. In 1999, RIMs were a breakthrough in the speed of memory, but have quickly fallen behind due to the advancement of technology in DIMMs. When RDRAM debuted in 1999, it ran at 800 MHz, which was considerably faster than SDRAM, which ran at 133 MHz at that time. But even though it was a lot faster than SDRAM, RDRAM only had a 2-byte wide bus compared to SDRAM, which had an 8-byte wide bus. So if you multiply the speed of RDRAM, which was 800 MHz times the bus width, which was 2 bytes, you will get a total bandwidth of 1,600 MB per second. RIM technology was designed to work with a continuous signal, which means that all the other memory slots on the motherboard must be used for RIMs to work properly. And if other RIMs are not available, then a user can install a C-RIM or continuity RIM, which is basically a dummy RIM to ensure continuity in all the memory slots. In order to meet the higher demands of faster processors and memory controllers, a new technology was developed called Dual Channel Mode. Dual Channel Mode requires a pair of identical DIMMs installed on the motherboard, which allows the memory controller the ability to communicate with two DIMMs simultaneously, which increases the speed of accessing the memory. In order for Dual Channel to work, the motherboard must be equipped to work in Dual Channel Mode and the memory DIMMs must be identical to each other in speed, size, and features. 
Then the DIMMs must be inserted into the motherboard in a specific slot configuration in order to enable dual channel mode. Typically, the memory slots will be color-coded to help assist to identify where the DIMMs should be inserted. For example, here we have some dual-channel memory slots. So, in order for dual-channel to work, you need to install a pair of identical DIMMs in the slots of the same color. In this case, we put a pair of DIMMs in the yellow slots. And there is also triple channel mode. Triple channel mode is not very common and very few motherboards offer this feature. Triple channel mode allows the memory controller the ability to communicate with three DIMMs at the same time. In modern computers, motherboards have a 64-bit architecture. So in single channel mode, it can transfer 64 bits of data at a time. In dual channel mode, that is doubled to 128 bits at a time, and in triple channel mode, it's tripled to 192 bits at a time. As stated before, triple channel mode is only available on a few motherboards, and only certain Intel Core i7 processors support triple channel mode. Here is an example of a triple channel capable motherboard. On this motherboard, there are six memory slots with two different colors. So, if you're going to install three DIMMs on this motherboard, you must put the DIMMs in the same color-coded slots in order to utilize triple channel mode, and those DIMMs must be identical. The term single-sided or double-sided RAM does not necessarily refer to the physical location of the memory chips that are on the sides of the memory module. However, it refers to the groups of memory chips that a memory controller accesses. For instance, double-sided RAM has two groups of memory chips. Now, this doesn't mean that the memory chips are physically located on both sides of the memory module. They can be on both sides, or they can be on just one side. But, that's not what double-sided means. It means that the memory controller sees these two groups of memory chips separately, and it can only access them one group at a time. Single-sided RAM has one group of memory chips. Now these chips can be physically either on one side or on both sides of the memory module, but that is not the point. The point is that because it's single-sided RAM, the memory controller can access it as one group. And because it's one-sided or one group, the memory controller can access it as one group, which makes single-sided RAM faster than double-sided RAM. Some RAM modules have ECC, which stands for Error Correcting Code. And what this does is that it detects if the data was correctly processed by the memory module and makes a correction if it needs to. You can tell if a RAM module has ECC by counting the number of memory chips on the module. In a standard non-ECC DIMM, it will have eight memory chips. But in an ECC module, it will have nine memory chips. Most RAM modules today are non-ECC. And this is because of the advances in technology that have minimized memory errors and have made non-ECC RAM more stable. Typically, today, ECC memory is mostly used in servers because servers need to be up and running at all times, and using ECC memory is just an extra precaution to guard against any memory errors. There is also buffered and unbuffered RAM. Buffered RAM, which is also called registered RAM, is made to add stability to RAM. Buffered RAM adds an extra register between the RAM and the memory controller. It stores data or buffers data before it gets sent to the CPU. And this is what adds stability and reliability to computer systems that have a lot of memory modules installed. So it's basically used to lessen the electrical load on your memory controller that's produced when you use a lot of memory modules, for example, in servers.
The kind of RAM that is used in smaller devices such as laptops is called SODIM. SODIM stands for a small outline, dual inline memory module. SODIMs are roughly half the size of regular DIMMs, and like DIMMs that are used in desktops, SODIMs also come in different types such as DDR, DDR2, and DDR3. So if you plan on adding RAM to your laptop, you need to make sure you install the correct type because the different levels of DDR in the SODIMMS are not compatible with each other.